Hey, it's Hunt. You found Hunt on Saints. We're talking black and gold football. Do us a favor. Hit the like button, share your comments below, and hit that subscription button so you can get all of our content. Enjoy. Uh, the black and gold back in action uh, in Louisiana. They were at Yulman uh, back on, I believe, Tuesday night. They were back in action yesterday at the facility. Uh, how's the reception been, or how was the reception at Yulman from the, the Saints faithful? Well, I actually... Uh skipped out on Tuesday night's practice uh, because I think um, I think both my, my wife and my one-year-old would have taken turns beating me over the head if I would have <laughs> gone to a, gone to a practice uh, the first day back home after 28 days in California. So thankfully, <laughs> thankfully my colleagues like stepped up and, and got it for me. But uh, you know, I, I think from what I heard, the reception was good. And uh, you know, a little, little booze here and there when, when Derek Carr touched the ball, but I think uh, you just judging by my Twitter feed, that's totally to be expected, and we'll probably hear a little bit of that in the Superdome on uh, on Sunday if he's out there, and oh uh, we've won for sure. But, look, I, it, yeah, they all know that they got to win these fans back over by playing winning football. Like, I, I think they fully understand that. And, uh, and we'll see what happens, man. I, I, expectations are very low for this team, but, I, you know, they, they could – they could maybe uh, maybe outplay them. Okay, we'll I, I want to talk about Juwan Johnson, and we'll get to that here because he's returning to practice, and I think that's a big deal. But I do have to go back to this. I there are some media folks who will intentionally very much separate themselves from fans. They're different species. So I, I'm not like that. I, I am a fan. I have plenty of teams that I want to win. We all know that LSU is one of them, and so I, I feel like I can relate to Joe Fan. I cannot relate to going out to a practice. Three weeks before the start of the season, and booing the quarterback for taking a snap—that is—that is foreign to me. Like maybe if he had been arrested for some sort of heinous crime, maybe. But just because he didn't score enough touchdowns last year, I—that is—that's wild to me. Yeah, look, I, I kind of like vacillating between it, right? Because like, I mean, number one, my goal is to like serve the fan base, right? That's, sure, that's my job. And the players make a lot of money because people pay a lot of money to see them to see him play and they pay a lot of money for the TV packages and the jerseys and all that. So like, you know, I, I get it. Like if, if you were sinking a significant amount of your own personal money uh, into this sport to be a fan, like you should be allowed to display or like display your displeasure or pleasure, however you want to do it. Um, you know, within reason, obviously. Um, but at the same time, like I, I just think some of the, the Derek Carr hatred has just taken on like this, this weird vibe here in New Orleans. I, I don't really understand it. Um, it's it's it, like the, the treatment he gets is like, he's out there throwing like 10 touchdowns and 30 picks a year. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's really, I, I, I don't really understand it, but um, you know, people are able to do whatever they want with their money and their, and their voice. One of the guys that he's going to try to throw those touchdowns to is Juwan Johnson uh, has been out obviously all of camp and returned to action uh, this week. Uh, how big is that that they're, I guess, likely to have him uh, in the first game? Um, I think it's pretty big, man. Um, I, this offense has some playmakers that are really, really nice, but I, I don't think they have this like huge, deep stable of them. They've got two receivers they can count on. They've got Taysom Hill doing whatever Taysom Hill is doing at a given moment, and Alvin Kamara. And then outside of that, it's, it's kind of question marks. Um, so... Juwan was, you know, he had a disappointing season last year for sure. I think all of us who watched him like really dominate in training camp practices were really surprised by that. Uh, but the fact of the matter remains that he's, he's a unique talent. Um, and I think when you're putting him into a, what we all believe is a smart offensive coordinator's hands um, with a quarterback who before last year was you know, a guy who really leaned on his tight ends, I mean, I think you can see the potential for this to be really good. And I think when you look at Juwan compared to the rest of their tight end room, I think there's a big separation there in terms of what he can do as a pass catcher. So, um, yeah, the return definitely opens things up for this offense. It opens, up, it opens things up for the rest of the playmakers as well. Taysom Hill's one that you mentioned. I know that in the preseason game, which they're not really showing much, they did hand him the football, which I – I much enjoyed. I want him to get the ball as, as many different ways as they can uh, because he's just a, such a Swiss Army knife. You all have seen in practice, which shows a little bit more. What do you expect the Taysom Hill role to be? Yeah, a uh, little bit of everything, man. Yep. It's been really exciting. And, you know, we kind of heard a little bit of this and we saw a little bit of this in the summer and the offseason program. Uh, and then we get out there for a training camp and it's just like every, everything's opened up. He's 
lining up at fullback and doing lead blocking. He's uh, you know, taking handoffs as a as a running back. Um, he's a slot receiver. He's a tight end. He's a wide receiver. Um, I, I think they are truly going to just take the governor off of him this year, you know, and, and not have him just be like the guy who they get the ball, you know, five six times a game in these uh, these funky situations. Let him be a wildcat quarterback. Like he's still going to do a little bit of that. But like I think we're going to see him truly be a full fledged part of this offense this year, and not just like, not just the the quote unquote gadget guy. Um, I think it's going to be really fun. And the smart thing that they're doing is is that they are using him like legitimately as a fullback, and they are letting him lead block, which is important. Not because he's like a, this great blocker, but like they're taking away the tendencies. So it's it's not like when he gets, when he's on the field, it's like okay, here comes the Taysom Hill play. It's, there's there's actually an element of surprise to this now uh, because he can be doing literally uh, 20 different things on any different play. So um, I, I think it's really exciting. I think he's going to get the ball a lot more this year. Um, and I'm really, really interested to see what that looks like. I've asked you before both preseason games, like how much do you expect to see the starters play? And I know that y'all don't know. So I'm not going to ask that anymore. But you've got to have a sense that there are like one, two, three guys that this last preseason game is going to be important for whether it's a starting player or a guy who's just trying to make the roster or practice pod. If if you could point to one or two guys that, that this would be a big weekend for, who would it be? Yeah, I think um, offensively I, I would go with Jordan Mims, a running back, um, and uh, Trevor Penning at right tackle. Um, but look, Penning really, really struggled in that first preseason, preseason game. He was a little bit better in the second one. And then uh, next thing you know, he's out there splitting first team reps with Ole Udo, uh, which is like the first time we've seen that all training camp. So I think he really needs to show that he deserves, he belongs there. As I think that the leash is kind of getting a little bit shorter for him. Uh, so this is an important week. Uh, and then for Mims, uh, he's a guy who I think has been, you know, outside of Alvin Kamara, maybe the most uh, consistent day-to-day runner. Um, but like he's, he's got to prove that he earns, that he deserves a roster spot. They, like, we don't know what's going to happen with Kendra Miller, who like has, has practiced for five minutes as training camp. Um, you know, does men's like do enough to where they're like, okay, we're, we're comfortable cutting the number 71 pick from last year's draft. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think he's got to show a little bit more in these preseason games, though, because he's looked really good in the, the training camp practices. And I expect him to get like a lot of opportunities this weekend. Um, defensively, uh, you know, I think you can kind of take your pick there. There's a, there's a lot of guys who have looked uh, pretty impressive in this preseason. You're talking about like uh, linebacker Anthony Orgy, who I, I don't think is like fully secured his his roster spot, but he's he's looked really good. Um, and then you've got guys like uh, Rico Payton and Rajon Wright in the secondary. Both of those guys have had really nice preseason performances, um, which I think is important because um, you know, they've they got to kind of show that they are able to step in and play in the secondary, which we've seen we've seen guys like Marshawn Lattimore and Paul Sanadibo already get hurt and miss time this preseason. Um, you know, they got to show that they'd be, they'd be like last year's Isaac Yadam where they, there's not this huge drop off if they step in. Um so, you know, both of those guys I think are kind of competing for one of those last corner spots. Injury updates have seemed to be positive over the last 48 hours since they have gotten back to New Orleans. I know that uh, the Paulson Adebo and Juwan Johnson were spotted out there doing a little bit more than they had been doing. Is there any more update there on the injury front of guys that may be coming back? Yeah, uh Tali Fuanga, um I did some teamwork today. Um so that's encouraging. He's one of those guys that I would fully expect to play in the final preseason game, like regardless of what they do with their starters. Um, I, I just think they want to see him get the reps in the game action. And maybe if he would have played last week against San Francisco, the, uh, the feeling would be different there, but I, I think we'll see him regardless. Um, and, you know, some other guy like Chase Young had, had been dealing with a personal issue. He was back. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, they, they just, they seem to be getting some, some guys back that they've been missing for a while. Um, still no Kendry Miller. Still no Marshawn Lattimore. There's still some guys that uh, they, they need to see, um, but they are on the up and up. He's Luke Johnson covering the Saints for The Advocate on Twitter, at by Luke Johnson. We'll talk uh, next week, Luke. Thanks. Sounds good, man. Thank you. Always enjoy our conversations with Luke. He'll uh, head over and do some uh, do some interviews, and you can read all his coverage there at, uh, at The Advocate. Hey, it's Hunt. Thanks for watching Hunt on Saints. Before you leave, help us out a little bit. Hit that like button. Leave your comments in the section below. And hit that subscribe button so you get all our content right here from Hunt on Saints.
We'll see you next time.